right, first up we've got Pale Blood from 1990, which is a vampire movie. So essentially in this one, uh, a vampire travels to Los Angeles to help a private investigator with a recent series of murders, which appear to bear resemblance to vampire attacks. So That's uh, more or less the gist of this one. Uh, I mean, there's things that happen later on. We won't tell you too much, um, so we don't spoil it for you, because I have a feeling there's still plenty of people out there who haven't actually watched this, despite the fact that it's, you know, a 30-year-old movie now. Now, I actually watched this one, I don't know how long ago, maybe a couple of months ago at the most. It was a movie that I just blind bought on Blu-ray. And of course, you know, well, I didn't, I, I put it on again last night, but I didn't pay as much attention to it because I had already seen it just a couple of months ago. It was just more of, you know, refresh your memory. Yeah, this one, you know, it, it, it it's a bit of an unusual movie. Like, it's got its um, kind of, like, own style, I guess you could say. Which, you know, it, it makes for an interesting movie. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a great movie, but, yeah, certainly interesting with the way it's filmed, the way it's acted. It's just a bit of an oddball vampire movie. Yeah, so this is a movie I've actually not really heard much about. I mean, I've seen it pop up on your list a few times. Um, but I'm not, like, the biggest vampire fan out there. You know, but this one sort of surprised me. Like you said, it has a sort of vibe to it. You know, it feels like a, a straight-to-video. It may have been straight-to-video, I'm not sure. So it's a, you know, it looks a bit cheap at times, but I think there's a lot of heart going in it. There's a lot of, um, I don't know, somewhat interesting ideas, so at least I wouldn't go as far necessarily to say innovative, but there's some new things in here that you don't see in every other vampire movie. Uh, so it has a nice vibe to it. Uh, somewhat surprising things happen. Um, some of it I like, some of it's a bit more like 50-50. You know, but overall, I thought it was actually, you know, it was sort of a nice surprise. It's not like a great movie, but, you know, it's certainly watchable. Yeah, well, the uh, the lead uh, vampire in the movie, Michael Fury. Well, what a name. <laughs> uh, in fact, I, I think the writers were thinking, ooh, what a spicy name with... <laughs> concocted for this character and I, th I think with uh, as the characters introduced in the movie they managed to find about four or five different times to say the name Michael Fury like within a span of like ten seconds they say it like four or five times uh, like when he's in the airport they're like uh, got a call for Michael Fury and he goes to the phone I'm Michael Fury Are you Michael Fury yes I'm Michael Fury well, uh, I don't know I, all I can recall is they said the name like four or five times in like ten seconds it is a nice name <laughs> and, and it's not it's not really a surprise by the way with his character you know what we find out about his character you can sort of see all the own where it's going but I do appreciate how they in a way sort of dried out that Mystery might be a bit strong, but they sort of dried out this toy, which I sort of enjoyed. Hmm. And the funny thing about it, I, I didn't notice it too much last night because I just watched whoever uploaded this movie on YouTube, which is a much inferior quality version of the Blu-ray that I actually have. I was just too lazy to go put <laughs> Blu-ray on uh, for a movie that I had no intention of, you know, like giving my full attention to. So, because as I said, I had watched it only a couple of months ago at, at the most, so um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to talk about Ancient Orange. Oh, yeah, no, actually, what I was going to say is, um, I didn't notice it too much last night when I watched it off the YouTube version, but when I watched it on the Blu-ray, it just felt like, I don't know if it was the way it was filmed, um, it almost felt like I don't even know if I could say it felt like it was dubbed, but it just... Maybe it's the lead vampire himself, but something about his voice just just doesn't... It's, it, it just sounds weird with it, with his character. Um, I don't know, did you get any... Did you pick up anything from the audio like well, that? So, I, I, watched the, um, I watched the YouTube video that was uploaded... Um, uh, to be honest, I'm sort of surprised this one hits Blu-ray, but I I can I answer a lot of these lower quality movies are doing that nowadays. Um, so I noticed there was something about him that struck me as interesting. It wasn't like he he didn't necessarily have an accent or anything. I, I don't think he did, but he he did have a 
he, 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 he had a very interesting way that he was playing his character. And I did get like a daft sense, but he did stand out in like a, I guess you could say, almost an indescribable way. Yeah. Um, to be honest, there's not too much in the movie that I actually really made note of, other than just the general fact that the movie just does have its own, like we've said, vibe, style. It's just got this kind of like general unusual weirdness to it that you don't really have in other vampire movies. You know, other vampire movies play it pretty uh, straight and they're, they're usually, for the most part, similar to one another. This one, yeah, it's um, very different. <laughs> and, and it does have Wings Hauser in it, who is a, um, he's an actor I'm not deeply familiar with, but he's like pretty hammy in every movie I've seen him in, including like a 1988 movie called The Carpenter. Um, so Wings House, it was pretty nice to see her. Um, and his character, through the end, just gets like, so out there, and it's it's just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, he does seem to have a little bit of a, a following from, peop from some of the genre enthusiasts, I guess you could say. I remember him in Mutant and a couple other movies, but yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to mention... This uh, movie has a lot of music by the band Ancient Orange, which isn't a band, it's a, it's a name I knew, but it's not a band I ever actually listened to. So when I'm listening to the music, I'm like, hey, that's, that's Ancient Orange, it's so random. I was expecting something a bit more punkish, but it has sort of almost like a gothic -y vibe, um, which I thought really fit in with the movie. I mean, the clap scenes, I mean, it, it felt like this is the exact type of music that would be in this type of movie. So, you know, I enjoyed it. It was a bit repetitive because they've cut, they played this one song like three times, but... Yeah, just I, randomly <laughs> cut to the band and for, for no reason sometimes, yeah. It, it, that's actually another point. There was some, um, I wouldn't necessarily say outsy shots, but there are a few scenes in here that... Um, have a bit of a, uh, I, I guess you could say, out to feel to them. Like the, when this one main character seduces a woman and brings her back to her place. Um, it's like done sort of like in a fast motion, but then it slows down as soon as she's on the bar. It, it looks pretty cool. And I, I'm not sure what goes into doing uh, scenes like that. Um, and it, it doesn't happen all that often, but it's noticeable. And I think it just adds to the somewhat unique feel of the movie. Hmm. I did ask what to mention. I'm I'm not familiar with the actress, um um God, what's her name? Pamela Ladwig. But I did like her apartment. She had some classic vampire movie posters on her wall, uh Return of Dracula and Kiss of the Vampire. And she was watching us for our two. So I I enjoy that she is after my own heart. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, it's an interesting movie. It's. It, it's. It, it, it's not going to compete with something like the original Fright Night or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. It, it just doesn't pack enough oomph, I guess, to um, for me to really say, "Hey, you got to go out and watch this." But uh, you know, if you're interested in vampire movies, I'm sure you can sit down and watch this for ninety minutes and at least not be bored out of your mind. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which is pretty much my average rating. Yeah, so this one, like I said at the beginning, sort of surprised me. I wasn't really expecting to care much for it. And it, it's still not a great movie, but it was a bit more stylish than I had imagined it would be. And I thought some of the story elements were pretty interesting. Um, you know, you, you see where the main character is going, but there's another character who toward the end we find out, hey, hey, he's trying to do this setting a trap, and it's, it's sort of cool, um, it sort of surprised me. So this element of this movie I quite like, has an interesting vibe to it, um, and if you can get past that, like, you know, almost straight to video feel it has, I think if you're a vampire fan, it, it's at least worth experiencing once. Um, so I'm going to give this one, and I, I struggled a little, but I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10, uh, that's my average rating, so it's not, you know, particularly great, but it's, it's definitely not bad. So I had an okay time with it. Staff not a fan. Surprises me, but there you go. Hmm. Michael Fury's getting your heart <laughs> under the collar. Yes, he is. <laughs>